Kristen. Welcome to Rock Book Show. And joining me today is Josh Frank, one of the authors of the new book, The Good Inn. You, Black Francis, and lovely illustrations by Stephen Appleby. Congratulations on the book. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, so first, let's start with you, what your background is and how you came to know Black Francis. I went to college in New York. I went to SUNY Purchase, uh, studied film. And uh, when I got out of film school, I, you know, most of my friends went on to like uh, do the coffee d thing for, uh, for, for people in Hollywood. You know, you, you start at the bottom. And I really didn't want to start at the bottom. I really, I kind of had this idea that if I just started being an artist, I would be an artist immediately as opposed to being, um, you know, uh, a, a PA or something. So uh, I went out to uh, L.A. anyway uh, and uh, at least, you know, because my parents really wanted me to try it and did the um, assistant thing for four weeks and then I left and I drove to Austin and I started a theater company. And the idea was, well, if I can't, you know, I don't have millions of dollars to make a movie right now, but I have a lot of great ideas for stories, I'll, I'll write some cinematic plays. And by doing that, I got to start being the artist that I wanted to be directly out of school. And I just, you know, each step I made was always with this idea that I would get to do what I really wanted to do, which was create original work and have the world see it in some way or another. And um, one of the plays I did uh, in my, with my cinematic theater company in Austin was um, uh, an adaptation of Werner Herzog's crazy film Strozek. Um, this was a little bit before like America sort of embraced him and he started making American movies. So, and I had only discovered him because of film school. Uh, a couple years later, I moved back to New York and I was working on Off-Broadway uh, that's my day job uh, as an associate producer on a rock musical, uh, Janis Joplin musical. And um, during the, the, you know, when I was sitting backstage, you know, trying to drown out with, you know, all those songs of hers I've heard, I had heard a million times each night. I kind of started thinking, what would my generation's Janis Joplin musical be? You know, like what would be a cool off-Broadway musical for kids that grew up in the 90s and of course you know I thought oh a Pixies musical would be so cool because of all the visual imagery you know because I was you know in my head I had Stephen Appleby's rockets shooting up and I had the monkeys you know from uh, from the photographs from uh, uh, Simon Larbassier and and so you know at that time Black Francis was uh, Frank Black and he was doing his solo thing and um, I was still a huge fan of his work solo, you know, like to me, he was, he was never just the lead singer of the Pixies, he's a musician, you know, and so everything he did was, was a part of his canon, you know, and whether it was as good or not as good or as strong or not as strong or whether it had Kim or it didn't have Kim, it was this, uh, this artist, you know, that I loved. And um, so I was just really curious, you know, like, well, what was... You know, he was in this band that really wasn't very well documented in a modern sense, and now he's. So I, I, I thought, well, what the hell? Like, I'll, I'll reach out and see if, um, see if he's interested in me trying to write a musical about his life. You know. How do you start that letter, dear Black Francis? Yeah. Well, what I did was I found who his agent was, and I, I called, I emailed his, his agent. It must have helped that it was the earlier days of email, and so a lot of people weren't getting emails, you know? You could <laughs> and, still get through. <laughs> so, so, like, I was maybe one of ten emails in the day instead of a hundred, but, but I got an email back that he would meet with me. Uh, he was interested in hearing about Werner Herzog, because that was on my, that was on my, my, um, my dossier that I had staged. So from the beginning, our connection was, was based on oddball film ideas. So his manager said, um, Charles is uh, in LA, uh, where are you? And so I wrote, well, I'm gonna be in LA tomorrow for a week. And I can meet him if he's free. And he wrote back saying, okay, great, uh, see you tomorrow. So. Um, I looked at my bank account and I was say, did you really have this trip <laughs> I to my bank account and I had about nine hundred dollars in there and I found a ticket for about three and I took a plane out and met Charles for uh, Black Francis for for a martini at Mousson Franks 
and uh, that was the beginning of it. And and that that morphed into the first my first book, the Pixies biography, which uh, then morphed into my second book about Peter Ivers, because in my research for my first book. Um, I discovered that, you know, in heaven that the Pixies covered was by this oddball, amazing character, uh, sort of lost, um, if wonderful, important pop culture figure uh, who was, you know, mysteriously murdered uh, sort of in his prime in Los Angeles, and which then uh, led to me and my book agent being, all right, what are we going to do next? You know, we had two, never thought we'd have one, and I wasn't sure. And then, um, you know, me and Charles, you know, kept in touch over the years. And uh, I was moving on from books into, you know, more just concentrating on screenplays. And Charles had an idea for a movie. And I was sitting there with him, having just had a couple of really great scripts of mine get really close to getting made, but not. And I said, look, man, this movie's gonna get made, I know it, you know, like this, the good end, this idea, it's great, we can do it. But I'll tell you what, I think we should, I think we should try it different. I don't, I, I think we should think different about getting, getting this idea out there. People that are making movies now, they're, they're going up against, you know, the studios if they're doing it with Hollywood. They're vying for money on, um, you know, from independent film producers on the other end. I think we should just get this idea, get this story out there however we can. How would you feel about me pitching it to my book agent? And let's, let's, let's write the movie as an illustrated book. Let's get the movie out as a book first and get people excited about it. And then the people that get it, the people that love it, they'll come to us. You know, whether, not, not, not necessarily like a big studio, but like um, even just some, some guy, you know, that like speaks French and, you know, like uh, is really good with like uh, effect, digital effects or something. It's like, I'm in, you know, like, great. This is our, this is our net to like find our people to, to make this happen. So that was sort of the idea. And, and actually before the whole, the light bulb for the book, first, the first step really was my idea to bring in Stephen Appleby to, to sort of do storyboards for our movie. And then together, those ideas all melded into, wow, this would make a really cool book. So just to, to go back, so this is a soundtrack of a film. Do you want to? <laughs> yeah. This, it's, it, it's, a book based on a, it's a book based on a soundtrack that has not yet been scored to a movie that has not yet there been is. made about the first narrative pornographic film ever to be released. Yeah. Which in itself, you're already intrigued. When I read that in the introduction, I'm like, okay, I have to go because this is just the craziest thing. But you're talking about the collaborative process. This is such an interesting way that you all did come together because you're bringing in your three different arts elements and you're doing it over the phone and the internet. And so what is that like? It was cool. We each had our role, you know, like uh, Charles has this vi had this vision and uh, an authentic, uh, very authentic vision that he wanted to, to that, that you know there there were rules in his head that were clear and he so when I came to him to flesh it out my job was to flesh it out and and put it on paper you know and so when I would come back to him with with my different ideas for fleshing it out some of them were thumbs up and some of them were no that doesn't work that doesn't work in the authentic idea I have here or that doesn't I don't see that or I don't get that. I, you know, found a way to tell his story in a book format uh, by using my years of writing screenplays and plays and, and biographies. And so then once it was on paper, I sent it to Appleby over in the UK and he read it. And then I wrote out lists of like what I thought the most active, important images for any given moment was that I've or, you know, and then also Charles as well. You know, again, I, I felt like sort of like a translator of Charles's mind. So it's like, even though Charles wasn't like, we need a picture of this or we need a picture of that, mm -hmm. from knowing what was important to him, right. like from, 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 from being very aware of what Black Francis 
what what the driving force of his interest was, I was able to say, you know, uh, Stephen, I think we definitely need, uh, you know, this picture of uh, Soldier Boy and uh, Rousseau, his commanding officer, uh, looking up at the Aina ship with Nicole in the background, you know, uh, and he's like, well, she's going to be very small. That's how he talks. She'll, she'll be very small. She'll be very small. You know, he's, very, he's so great and so sweet. And, and his demeanor is just like, is so, uh, so cl classical and, and, you feel like you're you feel like you're at the round table at the Algonquin, you know, like with and we were there actually for a drink before the the night before the event, which is awesome. But anyway, I digress. And this Abby's like, she'll be very small. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Um, I think that's cool because it's like, you know, you won't see her even in because it's at the beginning, but at the end, that's the reason you you know, you you know it, that's why she's there right. at the end, because she's actually there at the beginning. And so, and he's like, oh yes, I, I see, that's, that's, that's wonderful, you know? And then, and then he'll add in little elements of, you know, then he gets it, that then dictate, dictated, uh, you know, his, his direction with more, with, with other images that, that were, and you know, I'd say half the images were ones that like were direction, directed, and half of them were ones that he, wanted to do from you know that he was inspired to do from 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 the text i also like how the black francis's songs remain musical centerpieces yeah. in the story yeah you know in the movie version i think the idea is that maybe there'll be one musical singing centerpiece but th it worked really well in this because part of the idea of the book was to play with all the different uh, elements of a movie, you know, from silent film to to uh, to the epic, to you know the 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 the, the porno, to to the musical, and so the idea of them breaking into songs in the book, I thought was really cool. And also, that's just me. That's 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 very much my. Charles even said this. Uh, Black Francis, you know, he's like he's like. You know, I get the music, you know, the musical numbers in there. That's very you, you know, like, you know, the, the characters just break into song. Like, I, I think more people should just break into song, I do too. right? We're on Broadway. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think that, I think that's a, it's a missed way of communicating yeah. in the world, yeah. you know? I'd also like, like to add in a dance number if I could. Yeah, no, totally. And so I, but it worked in, in the context of the book being that, you know, in certain dimensions of the story, it's no it, no one talks it's all boxes with silent text and then in other dimensions of the film there's musical the the the, the characters break into song we have to point out that this isn't just a book about pornography it's so much more than that the good in is really just the the centerpiece the centerpiece yeah it's not you know the, the press, you know, when they first heard Black Francis is doing a book and involved, you know, Black Francis writes porn, right. it's like, okay. Makes a good headline. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's far more interesting than that, you know, <laughs> like, I mean, the, to them, for some reason, that's interesting or that's sellable, but actually what's, you know, what I think is more interesting is that it's, uh, it's taking this idea that, um, this first pornographic film wasn't necessarily going, you know, striving to be a pornographic film in the sense that we know it today. Uh, a pornographic film now has a very specific purpose. Back then, it wasn't for the purpose that we, you know, it wasn't the same meaning, you know, that, that is now placed on it. You know, well, we're in Times Square. We were in the, you know, before it was cleaned up, it was the <laughs> home of, uh, of uh, pornography and the sh pornographic shops and and uh, nudie bars and stuff, but you know, back this 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 first movie was just these were the the French artists that were doing that were doing all of the 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 the, the most original creative endeavors and playing with the newest technologies. They played around with all these different things with movie cameras, with painting, with with photography. And so these were the guys that first were like, well, you know, we've told this story, we've told that story, uh, you know, we've told a love story, we've, 
you know, it's all very, but, but we, we haven't really told a story about, you know, that involves people having sex or something. So it's like, well, how would that work? And so we kind of were interested in the idea of the mechanics of that, the, the sort of deeper layers of that, like who were these people? Who were these filmmakers? Who were these actors that were in it? Um, and using that as the backdrop and also from, 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 from the research, the whole idea that, you know, the film stock that was used for these early experiments with, with pornography, they were, it was the same material that was then used to, you know, in World War I, you know, to blow, sh to blow shit up, you know? <laughs> and, and, and also it was destroyed because of moral codes and then repurposed to kill people. Right. And like that kind of stuff, it was just like, it was sort of, that was the, the, the deeper, the idea that there was this like deep literary stuff underneath um, pornography was, uh, was, well to me, that was what was intriguing to me. And I'm sure that to Charles, that was part of very active. And also I thought, I think he thought that the whole idea was very rock and roll actually, in a, in a sense. Yeah. Um, Nitrocellulose is pretty dangerous. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no. And um, in fact, we argued uh, for, uh, like uh, we fought over the title of this because he wanted the title all along to be gun cotton. Cause he just thought that was really rock and roll. Gun cotton is nitrocellulose. I agree. And, um, but we made a deal and the deal was the book would be called The Good Inn because I just thought it was perfect for that, but that the movie would be called Gun Cotton and the soundtrack that, that he, you know, has always planned on doing for, for the, for the story would be Gun Cotton. I'm kind of curious about Soldier Boy, why you left that as his name and didn't give him a name. Yeah. Well, it's because, it's because. Uh, the, the one, the, the, the main source material I had to begin with was Charles's, these demos that, that, uh, that, that he did, that uh, Black Francis did with uh, Joey and David uh, Lovering before they started recording their new EP stuff, you know, like it was like a way of sort of putting their toe in the water and sort of feeling out trying to play again. And Charles thought it'd be cool to have sort of something that was, um, uh, enclosed and that was sort of, you know, like a, a, a song cycle, a world that, 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 w that was uh, controllable. So he had this idea for this film and he used that story to create the song cycle that then they would make music to, to sort of get started playing music again as a band, which they hadn't done in so long. And um, so when he, after our first meeting about the idea, he sent me those demos. It's like 15 of them, you know? And um, I remember the file was called Pixes, P-I-X-E-S, because the three of them had, 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 had done it, uh, you know, without, uh, with, without uh, Kim on it. And, um, and um, in the email he said, uh, you know, uh, you know, Avi, he said something like, you know, if we ever finish these, I'll add the other I in or something like that. I don't know. It was, it was cute. And, uh, you know, they were just, they were, they were being very playful about it and very relaxed, you know, and just trying to, you know, but these songs were great and the lyrics were really what, and that's why I had to have the lyrics in the book. I had to make these song numbers because to because that was really the initial you know spark that lit this whole project was the lyrics from these demos and the songs referred to the, his character as soldier boy and in the first uh meeting we had w what he said to me is i have this idea uh for this story it's about this uh this uh, character called Soldier Boy. And so he called him Soldier Boy. And I liked that. I thought that was kind of neat, be especially because it really worked for the whole idea of this lost, silent pornographic film of who we don't know anything about or about the people in it. So that guy in the movie didn't have a name. He was just the Soldier Boy who met the innkeeper. And when we gave, we ended up giving the other people names because they were the actors in, because, you know, we added this parallel dimension of the actors. So there's George who plays Soldier Boy. There's uh, Nikki who plays the innkeeper's daughter. But Soldier Boy, rem I, I remained Soldier Boy because he was 
the one that jumped back and forth in between the dimensions. So he actually doesn't have a name because he's just a character. So are you excited now to see this translated to film and do you see it looking like this? Yeah, you know, I'm, well, I don't see it looking like, I see real people, you know, um, but we, we want to incorporate Appleby's work somehow and we have some ideas, but I'm incredibly excited to work on a movie with Charles. That was always the idea and uh, I feel like this is phase one. We're, we're starting phase two. I'm equally as excited for him to get into the music of it because, um, again, his original demos really were what drove my creative process. And so I've been living with this story for uh, three years with the music in my head, you know, and um, even though I think the music he'd do, whether it's with the band, the Pixies, or with other friends, even if it's completely different than what these original demos were, I just, like, to me, that will, that's a part of the completion of this project, and I'm just really hopeful that he's, he's going to get into it soon. It's just a, kind of a side note, but connected to it, you know, I was, I was uh, the, while I was waiting for you this morning, I was reading some, uh, I, was, I, look, I, ha I looked up some reviews of Indie Cindy, you know, that just came out, and I, I want to make, I, I do want to say one thing while there's a microphone here about, about the Pixies, and um, the, um, the reviews of the independent uh, EPs have been uh, f pretty favorable, uh, and um, people that are are uh, are not too emotionally involved uh, have been very positive about them. You know, express the things that are good, the things that are not so good. But um, I looked. There's a number of uh, sort of pissy reviews uh, for Indie Cindy. I don't know if you've seen them, but. Um, and they weren't even talking about the actual songs. They were mainly concentrating on the idea that um, that there was nothing new, that they were just the the EPs. Well, I just wanted to say uh, that all those people are schmucks <laughs> because they, over the last year, just delivered you know thirteen or fourteen new songs, you know, and. They did a very innovative way of, of bringing their music back into the world. And um, I, 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 the, I, I feel like the, the, these reviewers are I feel like they're children, really. Like they're not, they're, they're like, they're like, they're like, uh, they're like children holding their breath or something. Like, and I, I want to make a point about artists because I feel very passionately about this. And this is something I, I felt through all of Charles's career, actually. Um, people that, uh, that, uh, critiqued his solo career as, you know, he should have just let it go after the Pixies or, you know, I mean, there's, there's hundreds of thousands of fans of his solo work, which by the way, I enjoy his solo work more than I enjoy his Pixies stuff, mainly because there's more of it and it's, it's a, it's a continuing journey, you know, I mean, I love all the Pixies albums, but I mean, I would say I love his solo stuff just as much. And the thing is, is that, uh, my long-winded point here, is that people like Black Francis that make music their whole lives, they're not doing it for anyone else. They're doing, like, artists don't create for the, for the public first. They create for themselves. And I don't know why we as journalists or writers, why we would hold musicians in some sort of different place they're artists like like a painter like what you know, oh he van gogh should have should have stopped with <laughs> you know with 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 uh, with with his uh with his blue period or something you know like it was all you know like now he's just now he's just showing off or now 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 he's just trying to make money so so the pixies wanted to keep making music they can do that they're human beings. Anyone that wants to keep making music or keep painting or keep writing, they can do that. If you don't like it, okay, you don't like it. But who are you to say when someone should stop? I personally think that the new Pixie stuff is, uh, is great. Um, but, you know, some of the songs I, I'm not so into, but some of the songs I am. That's music. That's art, you know? And, um, yeah, it's a bummer that Kim didn't, you know, didn't want to continue the journey. But again, like Charles and David and, and Joey, they're artists. If they feel like the Pixies, they're the Pixies. And if they say they're making Pixies music, they're making Pixies music, you know? 
I'm thrilled that 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 they're still exploring. It's just funny because I saw this 10 years ago, you know, when he was doing a solo career and he put out Dog in the Sand was when I became uh, connect, you know, get, got to know him. And it's like, I thought this was all good stuff. You know, yeah, it wasn't the Pixies, but I wasn't comparing it to it. This was this artist whose work was changing and adapting and and uh, he's growing. These people are growing. And, you know, th it's something that really bothers me. You know, not just about, you know, how people write about the Pixies, but how people write about any musician um, in that sense. It's like, let's remember that these people are artist kids, you know, and, and not 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 here to serve you and your your um your ideal vision that you had when you were um 18 years old you know and actually and that's one of the reasons i'm really kind of proud that the good in book came out really actually the same week that the new pixies album came out is like well this just goes to show that you know it, to me this is like perfect because this shows that that charles is an artist first and foremost He's an artist, and he's the lead singer of this band that the Pixies that are awesome and that 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 you all love. But but he's an artist, and this is a this is the, this art is out in record stores, and this art is out in bookstores, and hopefully there's going to be just a lot more, you know. Folks are too, and I've just really loved to see this project in this form because now I've kind of got a vision in my head, so I, I can't wait to see what your ultimate vision is. But I, you know, that was one of the other things at the book signing. I liked the Stephen Appleby said, "My pictures are there, but they still allow the words." They allow you to read the words and make your own make pictures. Your, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, such a cool way to put that. No, no, it's so true. They weren't too much to where it was all just given away. You still got to use your imagination. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so this is The Good Inn by Black Francis, Josh Frank, and the most fabulous illustrations by Stephen Appleby. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me.